All right, so before we start building our game, uh, what I want to do is review the tasks that we're going to have to complete in order to build our Monster Tamer game. Uh, so for our task, what I've done is I've grouped these into separate modules, and these modules are going to be the approach I'll be taking to the video series, and I've grouped related tasks together so we can kind of accomplish our game in smaller chunks. And so to get started, the first thing we're going to do is our initial project setup. And so this is going to involve just basic uh, project scaffolding. Uh, so we'll create a very simple HTML page. We'll add in some CSS, show how we can run a local web server, and we'll connect the uh, Phaser 3 library and create our basic Phaser 3 instance. Uh, so this is just kind of getting everything uh, together so we can actually create our game. And we'll add in some nice enhancements for like the Phaser 3 types. So that way we have code IntelliSense uh, while we're working. Uh, once we have the basic project structure down, uh, what we're going to do is we'll switch over and we're just going to grab our project assets and add those into our project. Uh, so we'll show where those can be found. Uh, then that way we have assets we can start working with uh, when we start building our game. Um, so once we have the basics set up ready to go, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to dive right into our battle system. Uh, so we'll start off by loading in our game assets. Uh, we'll start building out our actual battle scene by adding in the basic layout, uh, adding in the menus, uh, allowing the player to provide input for the monsters. We'll have the monsters attack, uh, update the health bars, uh, everything related to the battle. We're going to get an initial prototype working. Uh, so this going to be all these tasks here. Once we have the initial battle scene done, what we'll do is we'll switch to our world scene, and that's just going to be our main game level. And so this will be like the overworld map that the player will be able to navigate around in. Uh, so we'll have to uh, do things like create our level, create the player, uh, do grid-based movement, and uh, add in interactive objects and uh, NPCs. And then that way the player has something they can uh, interact with. And we'll also do things like add in the uh, logic for uh, encountering the wild monsters. So this is what's going to actually connect this scene to our battle scene. Uh, so once we have our initial world design done, what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to Tiled. And so we'll be using the Tiled uh, map editor to actually create our maps for our game. Uh, so we're going to go over the basics of how we can create a very simple level in Tiled and some of the best practices that we'll follow for our game and how we create our layers and how we add in like our collision layer. We can add in custom types add in objects, and then that way we have one editor for editing our map, adding in our objects or NPCs, uh, adding in like the dialogue and movement for the NPCs and so on and so forth. Um, and we'll finally wrap up like how we can export that out into images that we can use in our game, as well as a JSON data file that we can load in Phaser uh, 3. Once we finish up reviewing Tiled, uh, what we'll do is we'll jump back to the world uh, scene, and this is where we'll actually connect a lot of those things together. So we'll add in the actual interactive objects, the dialogue uh, components, so that we can interact with the, the signs, the NPCs, and uh, have them move around the map. All right, so once we finish up our world scene, what we'll do is we'll take a quick uh, break and make our title screen. And so this is where we'll just create a basic splash page uh, with a very basic menu. Uh, we'll have in the option to new game, load game, a very basic options menu so we can do things like disable audio, control the, uh, the speed of like the animations and things of that nature. Then we'll go ahead and connect that option data to our battle scene and our main game. And then we're going to have another section on tools. And so as an example, we'll be using things like Tweak Paint, how we can use that to uh, debug our game, uh, how we can use it to easily uh, position game objects, uh, test out our monsters, attacks, and animations. And then we'll have our systems. Uh, so we'll be able to add in things like a save system uh, so we can save and continue where we left off from. Uh, we'll use the browser local storage. Uh, we'll add in a very basic inventory and allow the user to uh, pick up items and then use those items uh, in the game. I uh, will we'll view the monsters in our party, uh, be able to enter buildings uh, and interact with those. And then finally, we'll have uh, possible future content. So this will be things like cutscenes, uh, in-game events and tracking, uh, shops, uh, battling NPCs, Monster Encyclopedia, Monster League, gyms, uh, etc. Just other enhancements to really make this a Pokemon-like type game. All right, with that, that brings this video to an end. In our next video, uh, we'll begin building our project by doing our initial project setup.